Hello everyone, welcome to episode 12. In this episode, I'm going to be going over the theory of collision detection. And this kind of, the kind of collision detection that we're going to be implementing is a tile-based um, tile based collision detection, but we're going to kind of mix it with access to line bounding box collision detection. And so what is tile-based collision detection? Well, that's just when you have a 32 by 32 or some fixed size tiles and you see, okay, is this tile inside of this tile? Yes, then you can't move there. There's that, but then there's also access line bounding box, which is where you have arbitrarily sized rectangles, but not arbitrarily rotated. So you're still aligned in the XY coordinate system. So you could draw it out on grid paper if you wanted to and not have any diagonal lines. But so we're kind of doing a mesh of those, and this is like how Mario does it, how Cave Story does it, in particular Cave Story, obviously. But let's um, talk about it some more. So we're going to be detecting collisions using collision rectangles for quote, and for our map we're going to be using tiles. And the tiles are going to be 32 by 32 rectangles, or more specifically squares, and they're just going to be a, at a row call position. So kind of how we have our map drawing right now, we have our map drawing at column 0 through 20 of row 11, so yeah, that's how the tiles are going to work. But our collision rectangles are going to be just regular rectangles having an XY for the top left and a width height, which get added to those XY values to get the right side and the bottom side positions. Alright, so quotes collision rectangle is actually going to be two rectangles, one for the y direction and one for the x direction. And so why have two collision rectangles? Well, by separating the collision rectangles, um, this allows us to give the player some room for error when colliding with blocks. So say he's about to get on that tile, but he doesn't quite make it on, but if, if we're having, if we only have one collision rectangle, then he'll just get bumped off. But in this way, we can kind of bump him up to the to the height of the tile and this just makes it feel more fair for the player because sometimes it's like you were just right there and like if the game like the game should have been a little bit more forgiving and so this is a way to make the game a little bit more forgiving and more fun for the player and if you play through cave story i think you'll find what i mean um yeah Moving on, we have, um, I'm going to show you quotes collision rectangles. So right now I'm showing you the size and placement of the of his X collision rectangle, which is the rectangle we're going to be using to decide if he has collided in the X direction. Um, it's going to be 6 pixels in here. It's going to be 20 pixels wide and 10 pixels down and 12 pixels tall. And this is all in a 32 by 32 um, tile. So, <clears throat> yeah, you can kind of just see that this kind of aligns with his face a little bit, but it's shifted down some to be centered. And for his wire collision rectangle, it's going to be this red rectangle you see here, and it's going to be two pixels down, and that means it's going to be 30 pixels tall, and 10 pixels in, and 12 pixels wide. So, yeah, let's keep going. Um, so, the algorithm. Uh, as an, a quick overview, there's going to be four collision detections. There's going to be a collision detection for the left side, for the right side, for the top and the bottom. And this is just so that we know if we collided on the left side, that means we need to shift over to the right sum. And if we collide on the right side, we need to shift over to the left sum. And, uh, we aren't necessarily going to do it in that order. It's going to be based on which one, which direction we're moving. So we'll check in the direction we're moving first. So if we're moving to the right, we'll do right, left, top, bottom, or something like that. But we'll do right before left, and that's the important part. So to do this, we're just going to split his collision rectangles in half. So this uh, top half of this red rectangle will be our this top half of this red rectangle will be our top collision rectangle, and then the bottom half of this red rectangle will be our bottom collision rectangle. So you can almost think of it as four collision rectangles, but I really, I kind of think of it as two. 
<laughs> yeah. Anyway, um, so we're also going to include the amount moved or the delta in rectangles, and I'll represent that as green in our pictures coming up. But it's just going to be if you're going to the right, your width is going to be extended out to the right a little bit more. And if you're going to the left, then you're just going to have this the left, uh, the x moved to the left a little bit and the width extended. So that's how that's going to work. And I'll, again, I'll show you in some pictures coming up. So let's start with the algorithm for the x direction. And we're always going to start with the x-axis, um, just because when we do slopes later, it'll be easier, and we'll find out why later. But just trust me for now, it's going to be easier. Um, so the first thing we do is calculate our delta x, and this is the amount we would want to move in x. And this is just the velocity x times time, and we're already calculating this delta x, so that part's easy. We've got it. We're done with that part. Um, then we check to see if it's greater than or equal to zero, then we do the right side first. So if we're moving to the right, we do the right side first, otherwise the left. And this is something I mentioned a little bit, I think, in the last slide. Um, so then we would create a rectangle including delta x. So if we're moving to the right, like I said, we just extend the width by delta x. And then we check to see if our collision rectangle intersects a tile. And I don't just mean like if it occupies a space in a row call position. I mean like if it is colliding with a solid wall tile, then we need to, if it does, we need to move it just enough to not be intersecting. And then we repeat the other side uh, with a new position. And so if we're checking and we're moving to the right and we weren't colliding with the wall, but our delta x is colliding with the wall, then we move the amount that isn't colliding. And I'll show you that in a picture and it'll make perfect sense and you'll be like, oh, I see what he's saying. Okay, the algorithm for y is, I'm not even gonna talk about it much because it's the exact same as x, but all the y's are changed to x and all the bottoms are, or all the rights are changed to bottom and all the lefts are changed to top. So same deal, nothing special about y. Okay. So here's my here's the scene. Um, my brother helped me make all these images, by the way. So I just want to give a quick thank you to my brother Daniel. He's awesome. So yeah, he threw these together in Photoshop for me. But yeah, so here's the scene. Um, we're just going to focus on some small examples, though. And the first example is going to be walking into a wall. And we're just going to go through one single frame as an example of collision. And this will be a pretty generic example of what's going on. So, quote's going to be walking to the right in this example. Here we are. See, we have this yellow rectangle representing our right side of, right half of our X collision, our yellow X collision that I showed you in the beginning. And added onto this is this green delta X portion of the rectangle. So, all we did was increase our right half delta x, sorry, our right half of our collision rectangle by delta x in width. So now what? Now we check the collisions. Okay, so we've got some collisions and I highlighted it with red and it's just this portion of the delta x that is inside of this tile right here. And this is the wall tile and that's why there's a collision. So we move it. How much do we move it though? We move it by the, delta, the amount of delta x that remains. So there's x, x is moved, and that was three pixels, because delta x was three pixels. So now x is moved. So what do we do next? We check the other side of x. And this will be the left side. Okay, here's our left rectangle. Do we have any collisions? Nope, so we're done. Now, are we moving, now we're gonna move into our y axis collisions. Are we moving in the y-axis? And the answer is yes. Yes, we are moving in our y-axis because there's gravity. So we have our bottom half of our y collision rectangle and added onto it is a delta y. But this delta y collides completely with this um, wall rectangle or wall tile. 
So we move by zero amount. So yeah, I, I put moved in quotes because we don't actually move. Anyway, now we need to check the top side. No collisions, we're done. Okay, sweet. So just some things to remember about that is that we are constantly being pulled down by gravity and we constantly have a velocity y that's positive. I mean, unless we're jumping. So in this example, I'm gonna do, it's gonna be a little bit more complicated and it's just gonna be quote, jumping onto a tile. And this is where I'm gonna show you our snapping up and you'll kind of get to see like how it offers the player a little bit of forgiveness. And this will show why we're using two rectangles and why we're testing in the direction we are moving first. So this is again gonna be a single frame. The player isn't going to see it being drawn to the screen like I'm showing it. They'll only see the very beginning and the very end. So quote starts moving up and to the right. And so he, he has a velocity y of negative something and a velocity x of positive something. So here we are. Um, so let's start with our delta x. Since our delta x is positive, we start with the right side again. And here you can see that we aren't colliding anything with anything. And you might think like, oh, but he should be colliding with this tile. No, we're just looking at the, this one section of a uh, collision rectangle and it's not colliding with anything so we move and yeah he's overlapping but we're not done with the frame yet and we'll be checking y soon okay so now let's check the x left again not colliding with anything okay well we must be colliding with something in the next frame or the next bit well no because we're moving up so we're actually going to move up um, by delta y and again this is because since we're moving up or in the negative y direction, um, we do the top side first. Okay, so you can see that we aren't colliding with anything in, in, at any point in our rectangle, so we move up. Now y moved. Now we have a collision with this tile in the bottom. So we sh I can show you this, and it's kind of hard to see because they're both red, but this is a solid red and this is a transparent red, but you can see that this part of the rectangle is colliding with this tile. So that means we need to actually be pushed out of the tile by three pixels. So that pushes us out of the tile. Okay, so I just want to emphasize why we're doing the direction of delta y, or the direction of our moving, our moving direction first. And that's because, let's say um, I didn't do that. If I check the bottom half first, if I check the bottom half first, quote would be pushed up by that much amount and he would be where he is in this frame. And then we would add our delta y and he would be, he would kind of bounce up off of the platform. And we kind of don't want that. And we could write in some extra code to check to like uh, subtract from delta y the amount we've already moved and I just feel like that would be more complicated though. So this is how I decided it would be easiest to explain and do. So that's um, collision detection that we're going to be using in a nutshell. Um, yeah, thanks for watching guys. It's been a lot of fun making these slides and it'll be a lot of fun to implement and it'll be really good to get quote to be able to run around and jump on things because that's a big portion of the fun in Cave Story. So thanks for watching guys.